let's talk about perspective. So there's a lot of words that help us understand perspective. Um, some of the easiest are when we say foreground, middle ground, and background. Foreground means the things that are closer to us in the picture, and usually that would be the things at the bottom of the page, because as the page goes up, it goes backwards in space. So this down here is usually the foreground. Then the middle ground is the middle of the paper. A lot of times you'll see the focal point in the middle ground, um, or the focus of the image, the emphasis. Then when you go back, furthest away, that's the background, kind of like the backdrop in a play. It's the setting, the scene, you know, mountain, sky, things like that, furthest away. Uh, so let's draw a simple landscape using kind of regional farmland as the theme and talk about the perspective as we're doing it. So first I'm going to start with the foreground. Doing things in the foreground to start is easiest um, in this kind when you're just drawing because everything else is going to be behind the foreground. So anything in the foreground is going to overlap the things behind them. So first I'm going to decide if I want something very, very close to the, the viewer. So for example, if I want something very close in the foreground, maybe I'll say we as the viewer are looking through like some, some foliage, some bushes. So down at the bottom, very large compared to the rest of the picture, I'm going to put some organic shapes. These would be a whole shape because they would finish, but they're cut off because we're just seeing part of it. And I'm going to make a, let them kind of overlap a little bit. Okay, so these are like my bushes that are super, super close to us. Then as we go a little further back, we can part putting the actual landscape. So this is still in the foreground, but uh, it's behind these bushes that are very, very close. I'm going to go ahead and put sort of a wavy hill. So now my picture is being cut apart into pieces. I've got the foreground with these things that are very close to me. I've got this, uh, this line that's showing me a hill as we're getting further away. Then I can keep doing this when we go into the middle ground. I can put maybe another hill. And before I go too much further, I want to think about if I want anything to go on this hill that will overlap the background. So for example, I could put maybe a barn on this hill. So I'm going to put geometric shape for the front of the barn, and it's just sitting on that hill. And I'm going to just go back, make a longer side. Now for kind of a classic barn roof, I'm going to kind of put this sort of roof. That's a kind of a classic a barn roof shape. And I'm going to go to the very top of it and match this line. So I'm going to slide back the same as I did for that line. And then I'm going to put the last part of the roof. So I've got my little barn here that's sitting on a hill overlapping the background. To finish it up, I can start adding some little details. You know, maybe there's a hay loft up here. And a door. Sometimes they have like these beams on them and stuff. Maybe some windows. Okay, so this is the middle ground and it is my emphasis too. It's kind of the part where my eyes are going toward. It's the focus of my picture, right? Um, so we've got these geometric hard lines, We've got these organic shapes, and we're on the middle ground still. So I'm going to put another hill kind of behind this one, maybe one that goes behind the barn. Okay, so I'm layering up my hills, and as I go it looks like they're getting further and further away. I'm going to put another one right here, and now we're kind of getting into the background. So the background is the furthest away 
And there's a few ways that help us know that things are further away. One, if they're like further up on the page, they're usually further away. Also, there's atmospheric perspective, which means that things up close to us are very detailed and easy to see. They're not hazy or blurry. And then as things get further away, it's harder to tell exactly what they are. They don't have as many crisp details. So if I were to say add some trees, instead of drawing every single tree, I might draw them in the same way that I drew these bushes because they're so far away, we can't even really see them. So let's say back here there's some trees. I'm just going to be drawing them as little bumps because they're so far away, we can't really see their details. Maybe there's some over here too. So this is atmospheric perspective. And it's called that because atmosphere is all the air around us, right? And so as you get further away from something, the air in between actually makes it harder to see. So that's why if you can see very, very far away, sometimes it's hazy, like foggy, because the air and the water particles and anything that's in the air is slowly building up and blocking your view. So atmospheric perspective is showing us that things are far away through less detail and haziness. Okay, so things that are up close are going to look big to us. Things that are far away are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so if I had any hills way back here, they'd be very small. You know, they're getting smaller as they go further away into the background. And so let's say furthest away we've got mountains. Now mountains are huge, so they look big on our picture, but that's just because they are so large. And then, of course, part of the background is the sky. You can decide, let's say, I'm going to say that this is a sunrise. I've got the sun peeking out here, and I'm going to draw clouds around the rest of the sky. You can draw clouds lots of different ways. But again, so... This cloud looks bigger because the furthest away stuff is here. And so the clouds closer to the sun back there are going to be smaller. And then as the clouds get closer to us, then they might look a little bigger. So it's kind of like the opposite of down here. That this going up gets smaller. But if we go to the furthest away part, which is here, the horizon, then going that way is going to get bigger. Okay, so I've drawn all these hills because I wanted to make sort of farmland and a patchwork sort of um, patchwork fields of crops. I wanted to make patchwork fields of crops. So let's talk about the lines that we could use and how we need to use perspective to make the lines help us see that distance, that space. So space in art doesn't mean like outer space, it means looking at something and seeing that you could, looks like you could walk into it. It looks like it has three dimensions even though it's flat. So space is the, the area in art that looks 3D, it looks like you could walk into it. Um, so for example, let's say this this hill that the farmhouse is on is going to have just a normal field, okay? Plain old field. We're going to make lines that go um, towards the background and they're going to use one point perspective. So one point perspective is when you have everything go towards a point. So let's say our point for this hill is back here somewhere. I'll draw a little super, super light one. Okay, so my lines are going to be going towards that. On this hill. They're going to curve towards that. Now, it is a hill, so they're not going to go straight towards it. Like, this first one might go straight towards it. Let's do that. See? Straight towards it. But every other line I'm drawing on this hill is going to be curved around the hill. So, when this one goes towards it, I'm going to go... So 
So they're going towards that dot, but they're curving around the hill. So these lines are showing one point perspective. They're all going towards that point. So let's say over here, instead of using just regular old lines, um, let's use some gestural lines. Gestural lines show movement. So like this could be um, a field of grain where the wind is blowing. So we're going to use some gestural curvy lines to show movement, but we're still going to make them go towards that perspective point. So we'll I'm wiggling them, but I'm still curving them to match. So gestural lines show movement. Okay, so they're curved towards that. Um, let's do some more. How about if I did some zigzaggy ones? So I'll have, we'll start with one that disappears behind the farmhouse. So they're all kind of pointing towards that dot over there. And that's kind of tricky when it's not a normal line. And then over here. Um, and I'm going to do another one that's just the normal lines. So it doesn't get too confusing. So curve these towards the dot. How about some of these back here just have like... Maybe crisscrossy ones. That. Okay, I've got my fields. So my lines are going towards my point, and I can erase that later. That was just a guide, but they're vanishing towards the point. They're all going towards it. So that's one point perspective. I've got atmospheric perspective. We use gestural lines. We showed foreground, middle ground, and background. Um, Let's do a contour up here. So we've got these bushes. Um, a contour is the outline of something. So if something's very, very close to us and we can't see through it, um, we might see the outline of it, and that is a contour. So contours are outlines. It shows the edges of an object. Contours show the edges of something. Okay, I'm going to try doing something a little cute. I'm going to have an animal that's in these bushes up close and we're going to see his contour just as outline. So we're not going to really see the details on him because he's too close um, and, the, and the light is hitting him. If, if the light was on the other side, we'd see his details really, really well because he's so close to us, right? Um, but it, it's going to have the sun hitting it, so we're only going to see like the shadow of the creature. And all these bushes are going to probably be shadows too. Okay, so let's say... It's a little maybe like fox guy. So I'm just going to have a curve here to his ear. Here to here. Okay, and this is little body. And then I'm going to have his little tail poking out. And there we go. So that's the contour. The contour, the outline, the edges of my fox. Um, when you go in to add the shading, anything where the, the light, whatever, wherever you put your sun, is not able to hit. So like, if I go here, this is all going to be bright because the sun's hitting it, but there's going to be a shadow on this side. So this side of the barn is all going to be shadowy. Right? Um, so like these bushes, maybe this the top of them the light can hit, but all this inside is going to be shadowy. This little fox guy is going to be shadowy. These bushes are going to be shadowy. So you wouldn't scribble scrabble like this, but I'm just kind of showing you that like if the sun can't hit it, like the back of this hill the sun can't hit very well, that's all going to be in shadow. Right? The bottom of the hills going to be shadowy. Maybe the underside of the trees. 
So that's the value in the picture, is this lightness and darkness, this shading we're having. Side of the mountains. And then any, any part of the cloud too. So everything gets shaded depending on where the sun is. So here we have a perspective picture. Um, and so you guys can try this. Oops. All right, guys. <laughs>